Welcome to High School Quiz Show, Maine. We're working our way towards the quarterfinals and the championship with the $1,000 prize in our sixth qualifying match. It's the Shipbuilders of Morse High School. Taking on the Red Riots of Orono High School. That's coming up next on High School Quiz Show Maine. Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by... Energy is about more than just keeping the lights on. It's about living life as parents, friends, and teammates. Unitil is proud to support High School Quiz Show Maine. Unitil, more than a utility part of your community. People who can work from home seem to love it. Who else loves it? Cyber criminals. Cyber coverage from Safety Insurance covers data and system restoration, data recreation, and more. You can ask an independent agent about safety insurance. We'll help you manage life's storms. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to High School Quiz Show Maine. I'm Todd Gutner. We are nearly through our preliminary matches as we knock the 16 teams down to eight for the quarterfinals. Each of today's teams hopes to be the one to go all the way to win the $1,000 prize for their school's project graduation. Morse High School from Bath is making their fourth appearance on the show, and they hope to defeat Orono, who is here for the very first time. Will the newcomer upset the veteran? We'll find out soon. But first, let's get things going by meeting our players. For Morse, we have Lachlan, Ali, Gideon, and Thomas, with alternate Declan, and coached by Craig Tinker. And for Orono, we have Nick, Teddy, Allen, and Noah, with alternates Henry and Jack, and they're coached by Troy Wagstaff. The competition has three rounds, the toss-up round, the category round, and of course, the fun lightning round. We'll start things off with the toss-up round. All answers are worth 10 points, and this is the only round with no point deductions for wrong answers. Players must wait for me to complete the question, and if one team answers incorrectly, the other team will be given a chance to answer. All right, teams, are you ready to go? Wait, I, I definitely did not hear you. Are you ready to go? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's more like it. All right, here's your first question. In a fraction, the number above the line is called the numerator. What do we call the, new, the number below the line? Gideon Morse. Denominator. Yes, denominator. In the classic nursery rhyme, Little boy blue, come blow your horn. The sheep's in the meadow, and what other farm animal is in the corn? Uh, a little late there, Teddy. The answer's cow, cow. What country in the southern hemisphere oversees the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park? Alan or Australia. No? Australia's right. What word that means time in Italian is used to refer to the speed at which a piece of music is played? Nick. Tempo. Tempo is correct. Up next, we have a picture question, so look at the monitor over here. In this image, identify the species of this primate, which is known for its intelligence and close genetic relationship to humans. Noah, or no? Chimpanzee. Uh, that's incorrect. Morse, you have a chance here. Go ahead, Allie. Gorilla. Gorilla, also incorrect. Bonobo is the answer. We'll move on. Some people say the internet abbreviation IMHO means in my honest opinion, but others say the H stands for what word that means modest? Nick or no? Humble. Humble is correct. Ecological wisdom and participatory democracy are part of the platform of what worldwide political party that can trace its roots to anti-nuclear activist Petra Kelly in the 1970s? Teddy, or no? The Green Party. You got that right. Here's our next question. What paper that is treated with a dye extracted from certain species of lichen turns red or blue to give a rough indication of the acidity or the alkalinity of a solution? Uh, Gideon, Morse. Litmus paper. Litmus paper. Nice job. The Bulls of the National Basketball Association play their home games in which Midwestern city? Noah. Chicago. Yes, Chicago. Next up is our video question. Once again, take a look at the monitor. Hello, 
My name is Joshua Chard and I am the 2024 Main Teacher of the Year. And today's video question category is psychology. According to Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, what is the term for the highest level of psychological development representing fulfillment of one's unique potential? Lachlan Morse. Self-actualization. You nailed it. Nice job. We're moving on here. One of just two Republicans on the select committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the Capitol, Liz Cheney was a representative from which state? Uh, Allie. Uh, Wyoming. Wyoming's right. What is the last name of the two German brothers who published a collection of stories titled Children's and Household Tales in several volumes starting in 1812? Lachlan Morse. Grimm. Grimm is also right. Derived from the Greek words for wife and husband, what is the name for a haploid rep reproductive cell, such as an ova or a sperm, that it can fuse with another haploid cell to form a diploid cell? Lachlan. Gamete. Gamete is also right. In geometry, which of these terms refers to an angle of greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees? Is it acute, obtuse, or reflex? Ali. Obtuse. Obtuse is right. All right, we have our math question. First one, there's pencil and paper in front of you. Here's the question. If you put $4,500 in a savings account at 3% simple annual interest, how much interest would you accrue over a five-year period? Noah, on the end, or no? Uh, what is $70? Uh, that's incorrect. Uh, Morse? You want to give it a shot? Uh, it's a little late, Lachlan, sorry. The answer is $675, 675. What Spanish word that loosely translates as sixth hour is the name for a nap that working people might take in the middle of the day? Go ahead, Teddy. That's siesta. That is. Crowned in the year 800, who was the first ruler of the Holy Roman Empire? Teddy, Orno. Is that uh, Julius Caesar? Uh, that's incorrect. Morse, you want to give it a shot? The answer was Charlemagne. Charlemagne. Here's our next question. Named for an American professional golf champion, the soft drink known as an Arnold Palmer is a mix of iced tea and what other non-alcoholic beverage? Lachlan? Lemonade. Lemonade is right. Someone who uses a wood-burning stove might buy wood in what unit of measurement that is equivalent to 128 cubic feet? Lachlan again? Cord. You got it right again. The D-Day invasion took place on June 6, 1944, on the beaches of which coastal region in France? Uh, it's Nick in Orno. Normandy. Yeah, you got that. The substance known as a mother of pearl forms naturally inside which of these things? Igneous rocks, seashells, or trees? Uh, Teddy, Orno. Uh, seashells. Yes, that's right. Next question. For the title of a 1922 collection of stories, F. Scott Fitzgerald uses what two-word term to symbolize the free-spirited mindset of the Roaring Twenties? Uh, Allie, Morse. Great Gatsby. Uh, incorrect. Orno, got anything? Jazz Age. Jazz Age. Historians believe that which ancient Egyptian pharaoh died at age 19, possibly from injuries suffered in a chariot accident, possibly from malaria? Uh, Alan Orno. King Tut. Yes, nice job. All right, here's our second math question. Get ready. A box contains eight yellow balls, six green balls, three blue balls, and four white balls. If a ball is chosen at random, what is the probability that it will be either white or yellow? Nick Orno. 12 out of 21. One more time. 12 out of 21. That is right. Nice job. Uh, next question. In November 2022, an agreement was signed for a permanent secession of hostilities in the two-year-long conflict in what region of northern Ethiopia? Answer is Tigray. Tigray. In the stories of King Arthur, what sorceress and pupil of Merlin's is usually described as Arthur's sister or half-sister? Allie? Morgana. Yep, we'll take that. Good job. 
In 2023, Imagine Dragons released a video for their song, Crushed, that shows a boy named Sasha walking through a village in which country? Noah, Orno. Ukraine. Ukraine, yes, great job. Parietal cells secrete what acid that lowers the pH of the stomach? Uh, Lachlan? Hydrochloric acid. That's right. St. Thomas, St. John, and St. Croix are part of which U.S. territory? Nick Orno? Puerto Rico. Uh, that's incorrect. Morse? Go ahead, Lachlan. Guam. Uh, the correct answer is the U.S. Virgin Islands. Here's our next question. In 2016, Oxford University Press officially credited what Elizabethan playwright and poet as the co-writer of Shakespeare's three Henry VI plays. Marlowe is the right answer. We move on. What two-word term that means enlightened rule refers to the event in 1868 that marked the end of the feudal period in Japan and the return of the emperor to the throne? Lachlan? Meiji Restoration. Yes, nice job. The brass section of an orchestra includes which instrument that is made from more than 12 feet of brass tubing coiled into a distinctive circular shape? Lachlan again. French horn. And you nailed it again. And that's the end of our first round. We have a score of Morse, 130. They're in the lead. Orno, not far behind at 110. We've got a great match underway. Don't go anywhere. We'll meet the players when we get back. Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by... Hey, how are you doing today? The Maine Education Association does a fantastic job of giving us a voice. So what do you think? Good manners. To help teachers and students realize that people support them every day. The MEA helps me be better at my job. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Before we head to the category round, we like to pause and get to know our players with a slightly silly question. And this evening it is, do you have any hidden talents? And if not, what would you like your hidden talent to be? We'll start over here with Morse and Lachlan. You're up first. You know, if I had to pick a hidden talent that I have, I'd say it's probably high school quiz show main. Not uh, many people know that I do this. No, really? Really. You're darn good at it. You're Thank darn you. good at it, Lachlan. Um, Allie, your turn. I think I'm a pretty crafty person, so probably something like that, like really niche craft things, like I know how to book bind. Oh, wow. So. Oh, I thought you were like, um, yeah, I, I was doing the other uh, definition of crafty, like uh, you're oh, slick and no. sly or something like that. <laughs> I'm the, no, you're actually good at things, like creating things. Yeah, cool. I'm definitely not the other one, <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Thank you, Allie, for playing along there. Uh, Gideon, go ahead. Uh, I would have to say my hidden talent is Mario Kart. Mario Kart, you're a gamer, huh? Yeah, all right, all right, Gideon. Go ahead, Thomas. My hidden talent's always buying the wrong size pair of pants. <laughs> Would you not know your pants size by no, now? No, I think, I thought I did, but then I get them home and it's like, darn, they don't fit anymore. <laughs> well, what is, your, what is your pants size off the top of your head right now? 34, 32. You think, you I think. think. <laughs> um, let's go to Nick in Orno. Um, I can solve the Rubik's Cube. For real? Yeah. Are you like super fast at it too? It's like moderate, average. What is average or moderate? Well, I mean, my best ever was like around 30 seconds, but if you gave me one right <laughs> now, it would probably be like This a guy. Are you kidding me, Nick? 30 seconds? Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, congrats on that. I couldn't <laughs> ever you. do that. Um, Teddy, your turn. Um, I'm pretty good at geography, but I wish I could fly. We should fly? Is that what you said? I do wish I could fly. Fly. Like, like pilot a plane or like Superman fly? Like oh, a like bird. a bird. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all would like to do that. All right. Thanks, Teddy. Um, Alan, your turn. I don't know if this really counts as a talent, but I can make myself cry on command. Can you do it right now? It takes a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have a few minutes, but I trust that you can do it. Yeah. Um, Noah, you're last up. My hidden talent's probably trivia, but if I had to choose, I'd like to be able to fly a helicopter. It sounds pretty fun. Fly a helicopter? See, I couldn't do it. I'm fine in planes, but like the helicopter's too open, and I'm afraid of heights, so I, I don't think I could do that. I don't think I could do that at all. Good so, for you, though, so much Noah. more elegant. What's that? So much more elegant. So much more elegant in a helicopter. <laughs> All right, both teams, thanks so much. The category round is next, but let's see how well you do with our viewer question of the week. Hi, I'm Paul Riley from Safety Insurance, and this is your viewer question of the week. It's a 
Louis Sokalexis was the first Native American to play Major League Baseball, as well as the first minority player in the National League. But which baseball team did he play for? Was it Cleveland, Boston, Philadelphia, or Omaha? We'll reveal the answer later in the show. Next up, we have our category round with the following choices. Slither This Way, Our Neighbor to the North, Setting Things Right, The Movie of My Life, Double the Fun, and History Happened Here. Questions have increasing point values and wrong answers will cost you. Each team will alternate control of two categories. With each question, they can choose to answer and either gain or lose points. They can skip and neither gain nor lose points, or once per category, they can toss and force the other team to answer the question. Players will have five seconds to confer and decide what to do. Uh, Orno, you trail slightly. You'll begin. What's your first category? Uh, neighbors to the north. Our neighbor to the north, these are questions about Canada. Questions about Canada. Which river connects Lake Ontario to the North Atlantic, forms part of the border between the U.S. and Canada? Uh, the St. Lawrence. That's right, St. Lawrence. Our neighbor to the north, 15. Churchill, Manitoba is known as a denning area for what, the western Hudson Bay population of what Arctic mammals that are the world's largest land-based carnivores? Grizzly bears. Grizzly bears, incorrect. It's polar bears, polar bears. Our neighbor to the north for 20. Victoria is the provincial capital and Vancouver is the most populous city in which Canadian province? Uh, British Columbia. British Columbia, yes. Our neighbors to the north for 25. The capital of Canada's Northwest Territories has what English name that refers to the copper tools and implements made by the indigenous Dene people? Yellowknife. Yellowknife is right. Our neighbor to the north for 30, the last one in the category. The northernmost point in Canada is Cape Columbia. On which island in the Canadian territory of Nunavut? Skip. You want to skip it? Uh, the answer is Ellesmere, Ellesmere Island. All right, that wraps up that category. Morse, what's your first category going to be? Um, the movie of my life. Okay, movie of my life. This will be questions about biographical movies. And here's the first one. In a TV movie, Angela Bassett, portrayed what important figure in the civil rights movement whose refusal to give up her seat to a white passenger on a bus led to the Montgomery bus boycott in 1955? Rosa Parks. That's right. The movie of my life for 15. In a 2022 movie, Daniel Radcliffe plays what real life accordion playing musician whose parody hit songs include Eat It and I Lost on Jeopardy? Uh, Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> That's right, yep. Uh, the movie of my life for 20. What electrical engineer and inventor of the alternating current motor has been played on film by David Bowie, Ethan Hawke, and Nicholas Holt, among many others? Tesla. Tesla's right. The movie of my life for 25. In a 2022 movie called Blonde, Anna de Armas portrays what blonde movie star of the 1950s who was famous for her roles in Some Like It Hot and Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Marilyn Monroe. Yes, you got that one All right, too. The movie of my life for 30, Kristen Stewart played Joan Jett and Dakota Fanning played Cherie Curie in a 2010 movie about what teenage rock band from the 1970s? Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. Ooh, that's incorrect. The movie is The Runaways. The Runaways. That wraps up the movie of my life category. Back to Orno for your second one. Uh, history happened here. History happened here. These are questions about historic sites. Here we go. The Freedom Trail is a walking route that links the Old North Church, Bunker Hill Monument, and other historic sites in which New England city? Boston. Boston is right. History happened here, 15. A National Historical Park on Charleston Harbor in South Carolina includes the site of which fort where the first shots of the American Civil War were fired in April 1861? Sumter. Fort Sumter, yes. History happened here for 20. Although he's closely associated with the state of Illinois, Abraham Lincoln was actually born in a log cabin in which southern state where his birthplace is now a National Historical Park? Kentucky. Kentucky is correct. History happened here, 25. 
First state national historical park is located mainly in which state that was the first to ratify the U.S. Constitution? That's Delaware. That is Delaware. And the last one in history happened here. A national historical park in California that commemorates life on the home front during World War II is named for what female factory worker character who appeared in ads encouraging women to join the workforce during the war? That's Rosie the Riveter. Rosie the Riveter, you swept the category. Nice job, Orno. We're back to Morse for your second and last category. Uh, setting things right. Okay, setting things right. These are questions about settings of literary works. Here we go. The title of an 1820 story by Washington Irving mentions what New York State Valley where the ghost of the headless horseman could be seen riding through the night. Sleepy Hollow. Nice, you got it. Setting things right for 15. The fictional town of Shadyside is the setting for the Fear Street series of teen horror novels by what American author? Allie, I'll need a decision here. Skip. You want to skip it? The answer is R.L. Stein. R.L. Stein. Here's setting things right for 20. To Kill a Mockingbird is set in the fictional town of Maycomb in which real U.S. state where author Harper Lee grew up? Alabama. Alabama, yes. Setting things right for 25. Hucklecat and Lowly Worm are well-known residents of what fictional town created by children's author Richard Scarry? Uh, skip. You want to skip it again? Busy Town is the answer. The last one for the category of setting things right. In The Princess Diaries by Meg Cabot, the main character, Mia, finds out that she is the princess of what small fictional principality located between Italy and France? Genova. Yeah, we'll take it. Nice job. That's for 30. And that wraps up our category round with the score. Orno's in the lead now at 250. Morse right behind at 230. Obviously, this is going to be a really exciting lightning round, so sit tight. We'll be right back. How did you do with the question of the week? It was Louis Sokalexis was the first Native American to play Major League Baseball as well as the first minority player in the National League. But which baseball team did he play for? Was it Cleveland, Boston, Philadelphia, or Omaha? The answer is Cleveland. Born on the Penobscot Indian Reservation in Old Town, Sock Alexis went on to play for three seasons with the Cleveland Spiders from 1897 to 1899. Okay, we're now heading into the final 90 seconds of gameplay, the lightning round. Players, listen up. You do not have to wait for me to finish the question. You can buzz in at any time, but do not answer until I call your name. You get 20 points for each correct answer. An incorrect answer will also cost you 20 points, and the other team does not get a chance to answer it. The clock is set. Good luck, both teams. Here we go. The Bill of Rights to the U.S. Constitution contains how many amendments? Uh, uh, Nick or no? Ten. Yes. What Olympic track and field event is named for the site of a battle in 490 BCE? Uh, Lachlan. Olympics. Uh, incorrect. Answer, marathon. Which river in Russia is the longest river in Europe? Europe? Uh, Thomas Morse. The Volga. Volga is right. Which planet in our solar system is closest to the sun? Lachlan. Mercury. Mercury, yes. What is the chemical symbol for gold? Uh, Noah. AU. AU, yes. Which animal is pictured on the California state flag? Lachlan, Morse. Bear. Grizzly bear. Grizzly bear, good job. A, cardi a cardiologist specializes in treating diseases of which body? Uh, Noah, again. Heart. Heart, yes. Which pyramid-shaped mountain in the Alps has a German name that means peak in the meadows? Matterhorn. Matterhorn, yes. Nicholas II was the last member of what royal family to rule? Uh, go ahead, Lachlan. Tsar. One more time. Uh, Russia. Incorrect. That's Romanov. Tracy Turnblad is the main character in which Broadway musical? 
Hairspray. What corporation released version 1.0 of its Windows operating system in 19... Microsoft? Uh, Teddy, yes. Ethan Allen, Letty. And that's the end of the lightning round with a score. Orno, 350 points. They'll be moving on to the quarterfinals in a few weeks. Our runner-up, Morse, has 250 points. Thank you for playing, and congratulations to both teams. Be sure to tune in next time as Yarmouth takes on Wells. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on High School Quiz Show Maine. Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by... Energy is about more than just keeping the lights on. It's about living life as parents, friends, and teammates. Unitil is proud to support High School Quiz Show Maine. Unitil, more than a utility, part of your community. Home renovations can increase the value of your home. Safety Insurance offers a variety of home insurance products to cover your home's increased value. You can ask an independent agent about Safety Insurance. Safety Insurance will help you manage life's storms. And by viewers like you. Thank you.